A Toronto police investigation continues at one of the city's best known private schools, St. Michael's College. It's over an alleged sexual assault involving students at the school. The investigation also involves a video shared on social media. Police say it qualifies as child pornography. School officials say it is in connection with two very serious incidents. Those are their words, two very serious incidents. And some students, I can tell you, have already been expelled. Well, this case at St. Mike's might bring back memories of another alleged sexual assault that involved teenagers, that involved the sharing of images, the story of Retea Parsons. Just to remind you, Retea died five years ago after attempting suicide. When she was 15 years old, she attended a party. She said she was sexually assaulted. Well, that night, an explicit photo was taken. It was shared amongst Retea's peers. One boy would later plead guilty to a charge of making child pornography, but no one was ever charged for assault. Retea's story spawned a national conversation about sexual assault and also about cyberbullying. Well, in the wake of his daughter's death, Glenn Canning has become an advocate. He's been speaking out about sexual violence. He's been speaking out about bullying, about not standing by, and we've got Glenn Canning right here in studio. And I know this must be hard for you every time there is another story. Allegations, um, whether they are fact, whether there are charges, we're not at the point of that yet. We do know police are investigating, but when you heard about this story, what was your first reaction? My first reaction was uh, I felt heartbroken for the young man uh, who was involved with this, uh, the victim. Um, I just, I know what he'd be going through right now and, and I really do hope he has a good support network and I hope he has uh, uh, counseling and I hope he can reach out because um, this is the kind of crime where there's uh, something being shared that uh, just continues and continues and continues and uh, has devastating consequences for him. But he, he risks that not having it ever go away. Let's talk about those consequences and where, in fact, it actually hits. Because we're talking about a physical assault, an allegation at this point. But in general, what is the perhaps deeper um, hurt that comes of this? The deep hurt comes from it from knowing that there were bystanders. Um, that there were people there who, who, from what I've read, were, were laughing and someone actually, instead of saying, this is wrong, i got to stop it, they decided to record it and share it. Um, that's a painful, painful thing to, uh, uh, to have happen to you. Um, or just no one was there to help, you know. Police say if anybody does get this video, it will be considered child pornography. We're talking about young people who are under the age of consent and they're asking those who do perhaps get it shared to them. Mm -hmm hard to understand why, but to delete it. Uh, that video, however, how does it change the narrative, if you will, the dynamics? Oh, man. Um, the narrative for the video, I, I guess, it's, uh, it's something that goes online, and there's always going to be um, some thought there that someone out there has it still, and uh, could any time just start sharing it away, you know. Um, so, so that's that's part of the, the dynamic of this this crime. It, it's uh, it's a, it's a crime where a victim just will be victimized over and over again. Every time it's shared, it's it's the same thing again. You know, um, but but uh, for the young guy there um, who who was assaulted, um, you know, I just hate to put myself in his shoes right now today. I, I've seen the consequences of this, and it's just devastating. As I say, police still investigating. These yeah. are allegations. Um, as a parent watching something like this unfold and it is your child who you promise when you hold them when they're born to keep them safe how does that affect a parent well um with our case you know with the case with Retea, we we put our faith in systems to to help us and uh, a lot of those systems just weren't there um and i i, I do know and i do believe that now we know um, that this isn't something that can just be brushed under the rug or something like that or pushed aside. It, it, it could lead to an awful consequence for a victim of this crime. Um, but for us and our parents, you know, we did the same thing with our daughter. You know, we held her, we made promises mm -hmm. to her when she was young. And, and uh, the first thing I told Retea when she, she um, revealed to me that she was assaulted, was I, I told her that it's okay. We're going to get through this and, and it'll be all right, you know. Um, it wasn't, unfortunately. Um, but now, today, we, we do know that um, there's more education in place. The, the police in this matter have come out with a very stern warning for anybody that they'll face serious consequences if they share it. In Retea's case, um, the police didn't 
do anything. They, they told us it was a community issue, not, not a police matter. Um, so we've grown from that, and, and I'm hoping that this now, right now, five years after Rattay's death, when you mm -hmm. see something like this come out and happen again, um, there's better support mechanisms in place. And I really, uh, I've read that the school has, has expelled I, I did expulsions on some of these young men who were involved with this. That's what we're hearing. There and, were and I, students and, yeah. expelled. And, and I, I would commend them for that. You know, don't push something like this aside. This is devastating and has to be dealt with very seriously and very quickly. You're saying we must talk about it. What do you say to bystanders as well? Because you're taking a message of sexual assault prevention, assault prevention across the yeah. country to various schools, in particular focusing on young people. Mm -hmm. What do you say to them about standing and being a watcher? Um, we, we, I try not to, to make them feel bad about it because, you know, I was a young man too and it, it's very difficult. You see people being bullied or something by older kids, stronger kids. Hard to speak up. It's hard to speak up, you know, but um, I always try to encourage them, you know, use, your, use whatever strength you do have. You don't have to go running in there and, this, and, and you know, trying to get into, into a, a breakup fight or something where you put your, yourself at risk. But you do have a voice and you can use it later. You know, you can go for help. You can tell somebody. You can tell an adult. Um, but the worst thing to do, the worst thing you can do is just remain silent. Uh, and that's what I encourage with them, you know, and it, 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 it resonates with the young guys I talk to because it's about character building. And I always encourage them, you know, when you grow up, your, your son or your daughter could be going to this school. What kind of school do you want it to be for them? Do you want it to be a better school, um, you know, for everybody? And the only way to make that, that better is if it's safe for everybody, every single person, the, the weakest person and the strongest, you know, they all have to be involved with this conversation. How, is, how are you doing, Glenn? I'm doing good. I get a lot of encouragement from young guys I see in the, in the groups I work with right now. Um, it, it's great to see them out there building character. Uh, it's great to hear back from them, you know, where they've heard uh, um, someone talking, you know, down to somebody else mm -hmm. or someone saying rude comments to a girl in their school, something like that, and you hear from them and when they call it out. You know, and what they're doing is they, they, they don't try and put each other down. They just try and lift each other up, and it's encouraging each other to be better. You know, be better today, be better tomorrow, um, and, and, and keep constantly working uh, towards making your school better, a school that everyone can be really proud of. Uh, and, and I get good feedback from that, and I'm very proud of that. I want to thank you for sharing your story, for helping us to understand the kind of times that we are dealing with, but I appreciate your time. Sure, thank you very much. Retea Parsons' father, Glenn Canning, right here in studio in Toronto.